Welcome to Starring You. I'm your host, Tasha Johnson, and I'm extremely excited today because I have Nicole Butler from Budget Like a Lady on today's podcast. Her blog is dedicated to helping women balance their life and money. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, Tasha. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. All right, so let's kick things off. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, if you haven't had a chance to visit the Budget Like a Lady blog. I'm Nicole. I'm the one who runs it, and I'm the solo person behind it. <laughs> I'm a wife. I'm a mom of, I have a degree in structural engineering, and then I went on to get a master's degree in finance. So that's pretty much where Budget Like a Lady started at, is with my finance degree. Wow. Okay. So, so why did you decide to start your blog? Is it mainly because of what you learned in, uh, in school for when you went to school for finance or what made you start? Your well, blog? definitely my MBA in finance, it gave me a lot, a lot of knowledge. And with that knowledge came, you know, people wanting to know more about finances. You know, once people heard like, Oh, you have an MBA in finance. Well, I have a question for you. So I ended up starting answering a lot of questions for, you know, family members, close friends about what to do in certain financial situations, you know, what would be best for them. So, you know, I heard a little birdie told me, you know, once somebody asks you a question three times, you know, you need to write it down. So that's yes. where Budget Like a Lady came from. You know, I started getting a lot of the same questions. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start a blog and I'm just going to write about it. And someone will be able to read about it on budget like a lady. Okay. That's fantastic. And whoever gave you that piece of advice is absolutely right. And I hope everyone heard that if someone keeps asking you, you know, at least three times, definitely make sure that you just go ahead and start that blog because you don't know who you're going to inspire. And that's, I, I love the fact that you actually took that initiative to start your blog. So what are your goals for the future for your blog? The future, I mean, it's really, my blog is a hobby right now. So it's really just to educate mm -hmm. and financial literacy in the community um, because there really is so much that people don't know. And which is you know, a little shocking because, you know, like right now it's tax time. And so now I'm getting approached with all of these tax questions. And it's, you know, something you, I wish I would have learned in school. You know, how do you prepare taxes? How do you prepare? Like, how do you find someone to prepare your taxes? You know, you don't have to do it yourself. So you don't have to be a math or an accounting genius it's, you know, just finding like the little basic steps on how to do things financially that, you know, just wish it was taught in school or you learned it somewhere. You know, my parents were very hush hush, you know, when it came to the money talk or talking anything about finances, which is kind of funny because my mother is an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's pretty much know the goal for the blog is really just to build the financial literacy in the community and you know get people talking about money it's not taboo it's not hush hush everyone has it so why not talk about mm -hmm. it more I like that a lot I really do so where do you come up with your best ideas because I really enjoy your blog and again you guys you need to check it out budget like a lady Dot com because she there's a lot of financial bloggers out there and, and you know I've read my fair share of uh, financial blogs but I really like the fact that your writing tone is very conversational so and and there's so many different aspects of the finance world that you cover too which I like a lot so where do you come up with your ideas first thank you for the kind words uh, but uh, my ideas really come from my experiences with finances, um, you know, I haven't made the best choices. And, you know, I really want my readers to know that I'm just like them. I'm out here living my financial life just like them. And I'm out here making mistakes and figuring it out um, and mostly talking with other people and other professionals. Um, it's really where I get my ideas from. So it's, you know, once you come across something and you're like, 
oh, let me hurry up and write that down because I bet you someone else has that same question or they're going through that same issue because it's, it's very common. It's more common than people think. Very, very true. So along those lines, What's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Well, and, and, and this is twofold of a question here. Financial piece of advice, but also life advice as well. Um, my best financial advice was from my mother, the accountant. <laughs> I was beginning to start my first job, you know, just graduated. And, you know, they hand you that big benefits package. And, you know, at, to a 22-year-old, with their first job, I'm like, well, what is this? I have no idea what any of this means. And so my mom, you know, broke it. Down, and the best piece of advice she said was to invest in your 401k now. She's like, get the 100% match. Because if you never see the money, you'll never miss it. And since day one that I've started working, I've always invested into my retirement. And she's right. You never see the money. You don't miss it. You don't budget for it. You don't say, oh, wow, I wish I had that extra $100. Because guess what? I never saw it. <laughs> so now I don't. That's actually the best financial advice that I've ever gotten. And because of that advice, my retirement account is over $200,000. So and I'm only 34. Okay. Okay. So I definitely okay. want everyone to... Heed that <laughs> little piece of advice. If yeah. I could pass that on to anyone, that's the best advice I could definitely pass on. Um, okay. In my personal life, um, one of my internships, my boss said, you know, bring a piece of paper and a pen wherever you go. You know, you never know when you're going to need to write something down, have an idea, um, write down a task. And to this day, I still bring either paper or pen, or, you know, everybody has their phones, the apps. So I definitely write everything down that I think would be beneficial to me in my personal or blog or professional life. Okay. And, and that's it. That's great advice. Great advice. So what are common budgeting myths that people need to get over? So we all have these ideas about, um, you know, like the stock market or, you know, savings accounts, CDs, like what are myths that we need to get over? Well, let's see here. There's, <laughs> this one is hard to narrow down because there are so many financial <laughs> myths out there. Um, uh, like, you know, with it being tax time, I'm going to go ahead and mention the, the tax myth of, you know, the bigger the return, the better. That Oh, yeah. Such a myth. <laughs> yes, you are right on that. <laughs> Essentially, you know, you're giving the government free money. The government is taking yep. their money and they're investing in it. So when tax time comes around, they're only giving you your money back and keeping the investment that they made from your money. So thank mm -hmm. you, you just made the government money. So, you know, we need to get that number down so you can keep your money throughout the year. And you can invest it yourself and keep the earnings from your investment. So that's the biggest um, myth, especially for tax time. You don't want the biggest return. You want to keep your money year round. That is good advice. Definitely good advice. So, um, Switching gears a little bit. So your recent post, How I Could Afford My Unpaid Maternity Leave, and You Can Too, got recognized on another financial blog. So you mentioned there were so many different ideas in that post. I mean, guys, you definitely need to check out that post. It's very interesting. Um, so you mentioned that you sold some stuff, which I thought was a very interesting idea, too. What are some of your favorite sites to use or things to do in order to get rid of um, items that we're not using anymore? Well, first, I, you know, sometimes I get lazy and the first thing I want to do is just give it away. So <laughs> I'll either drop it off at yep. will, but always remember, you know, that's a tax write-off. So that still helps you in yep. the end. Mm -hmm. Or believe it or not, my favorite 
site to sell things on is actually Craigslist. Um, it's free. Oh, okay. And, you know, either you can meet the person or they can come to your home, you know, but I always tell people be Craigslist safe, if that makes sense. You know, yes. don't meet anyone in the alley, you know, don't invite them into your home if it's comfortable. But because um, we sold some big ticket items, you know, had a big desk, uh, filing cabinet, you name it. So that was a great Craigslist thing. You know, they came, they had their truck, they loaded it, and it didn't cost me a dime, and I actually received money in the end. So that was that. Yeah. Craigslist is my go-to when I have big items to sell. Um, I have sold on eBay and Amazon. Okay. So um, I also recommend those too if you're, you know, guys trying to get rid of stuff. I think that's another post that I would like to see. <laughs> you know what? Let me write that down. Let me write it down. Uh, write it down because that's a post I would like to see. I um, I don't mean to get off on a tangent here, but the eBay has always been a mystery to me. So I would love to see a post on that. Again, guys, not trying to be greedy here, but I mean, if I've got her on the line, you're going to benefit from this information as well. So. <laughs> I definitely would love to see that. eBay has always been a mystery. Okay, well, be on the lookout um, for that one then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what are your pet peeves? I mean, we all have things that irritate us. So, you know, I want to make sure that the listeners get to know you even more. What are some of the things that bother you? What are your pet peeves? Oh, see, that's a tough one. I really, I don't have too many um, pet peeves. I know um, as a mom, I guess I have a long list of pet peeves that my kids do. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, as a personal finance blogger, I guess my only pet peeve is when, um, you know, people just don't want to listen and observe. You know, a lot of times they come to me and try to, you know, tell me what they should do with their money, which is great. You know, you need to control your finances. That is. But um, I am strictly just for advice. You know, don't sure. bank everything on me. You know, I am not a CPA. Mm -hmm. I'm not certified. I can only talk from my experiences and which I've experienced a lot <laughs> from student sure. loan debt sure. to mortgages and, you know, being out of a job, being laid off. You know, I have experienced a lot of turmoil, but do mm -hmm. not on me. You know, I can give you the best answer sure. that I can from my experience, but um, you still need us to talk to a professional. You know, if you have tax questions, you know, mm -hmm. definitely take it over to your tax accountant. If you have retirement questions, definitely go see a financial planner. I definitely recommend those services. But until you get mm -hmm. there, come talk to me. Come see me. You know, I'm more than willing to help, but I don't know. As far as pet peeves, I really just... I don't really have any. I guess I haven't came across that yet in my blog. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, it, it's kind of funny. And the only reason I ask that, I, I, I feel like you and I would be have the same one. And to me, that's just listening. Because I, I that to me, if you're not even willing to listen to another person's perspective, you may not agree with it, but at least be willing to listen to that person's that's perspective. That's a good one. Um, that to me is a, that I mean to me that's 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 a pet peeve. I, I have a problem with people that don't listen. I, I really do because if you came to my particular blog, if you were or if you asked me for advice, let me give the answer. You don't have to agree with it, but again, if you gave me that time, at least take the opportunity to to hear it out. You know what I mean? So I completely uh, agree with you because I. I think you, you were I, I was, listening. but then I kind of backed <laughs> off a little bit. I like your words better. The way you put it better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, I, but you were, you were, I felt like you were going that way, but yeah, yeah, we'll just take you to the finish line. I'm just going to take you over there with me. <laughs> 
So let me ask you, I've got a couple more questions for you. So what profession other than your own would you love to attempt? Honestly, marketing. Um, I am getting into this whole marketing thing and I would just love to, you know, engross myself in it. Um, You know, even though I am introvert, you know, I'm very quiet. Um, But like I said, like with my history, I'm an engineer. So the analytics of it all is very intriguing to me. So I would love to, if another realm, (laughs) marketing would definitely be uh, what I would like to try. Well, I, honestly, you're you're already there, uh, in my opinion. I tell people this all the time. And my background is in marketing. So I, I tell people all the time, if you've got that inkling towards, you know, you've got a creative side. We all have a creative side. And starting a blog is the best way to actually channel that energy. Because I know too many people that have started off in one career. and ended up- I completely agree. And, and that's... Yeah. And, and to me, that's it, it. It's the beauty of life, in my opinion. We Just because you start somewhere doesn't mean you necessarily have to end up there. We, we're the ones that put limitations on where we go. I'm a firm believer in that. So I, I think you are well on your way to being a marketer. I, I you know, with your content and uh, your determination, I, I know you're going to end up doing oh, that. Thank too. you. And I tell people, just keep adding. Just keep adding on. To the <laughs> you can just be like, I count it. Just keep all those commas going as far as I'm concerned. So, <laughs> all right. So what last question, what piece of advice do you have for aspiring bloggers? So there's a lot of people out there that, you know, are kind of on the fence about this whole blogging thing. They let the tech stop them. They let, you know, like technology stop them. I don't know if I have enough ideas. What advice do you have to those people that are on the fence about blogging? Um, I just jump, just do it. I mean, just see what happens. You know, um, what do you have to lose? Um, you have everything to gain. Um, you know, but for new bloggers, I will say this: when you write, make sure that you're writing for yourself. You know, don't write to gain more followers. Don't write to, um, you know trying to be this big, huge blog that makes, you know, a million dollars, you know, that shouldn't be your motivation. Your motivation is really to write and get information out there, you know, because the first month, six months, you know, you could probably only have maybe 20 views a day. So you shouldn't let that discourage you, you know, just keep writing mm-hmm. for yourself. And sooner or later, traffic will pick up. You will get that traction, but it's not an overnight thing. It's definitely not an overnight success. I've been blogging for almost two years. April would be my two-year anniversary. So, and so just recently, you know, I started getting, you know, the big traction and the, you know, the thousand views um, in one day. So, and that was just recent. I've been doing this for almost two years. So just keep going, keep at it. Um, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, as long as you keep that in mind, you would definitely be successful. Okay, I absolutely love that. And, and I hope everyone, I'm just going to emphasize that even again, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I love that. I really love that. And that pretty much sums up a, 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 so much of blogging, in my opinion, because there's a lot of people that out here, guys, that are, you know, they're trying to suck your, you into this whole get rich, rich exactly. quick scheme and all that stuff. But it, it's it's not like that. You really do. I, I wholeheartedly and that's why I wholeheartedly love your material, because you can tell that you're actually invested in this. And it's not just regurgitated <laughs> <laughs> advice that you hear. Like, I mean, you know what I mean, guys. I, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I mean, we. I know there's nothing new under the sun, but there's a different way that you can view the angle of it. You know what I mean? So I love how you actually take some, a lot of that information and you shape it into your own. And that's because you view it from a marathon standpoint. And and I really like that. I I, I thoroughly enjoy um, 
your your content. And guys, I want to make sure that you check out her blog again, Budget Like a Lady. Nicole, I could talk to you all day. I, right? And you know, you, you touched on I, something else that I kind of wanted to bring up for new bloggers. The regurgitated yes, content? There we go. Yes. <laughs> Because there's so much exactly. of that out there. <laughs> well, it's it's not that. It's um, how you mentioned how you like the way that I talk in my blog posts. And even though someone yes. else may have already said it, you know, that shouldn't discourage you from saying it from your own perspective. Because someone wants exactly. to hear it from you. You know, they have your point of view. So, yeah, they can go on, you know, entrepreneur.com or, you know, Kiplinger or Inc., you know, these big, huge magazines, they can read about retirement and Roth IRAs and everything else. But you know what? They want to hear it from a blogger. You know, they want to hear it from you. Like, what was your experience? So I don't want, you know, anyone to be discouraged by, oh, well, you know, there's so many personal finance bloggers out there. There's so many social media bloggers out there. Just do it. Someone wants to hear from you. A lot of people want to hear from you. You'll be surprised. Exactly. And and that's what, and, and you know what, you, you, I think you said it better than me this time. <laughs> I don't want, I hope, <laughs> I hope my content of the, you know, I don't want to he- read the regurgitated content, but that's what I meant by that guy. <laughs> we want to hear your point of view. There's so many, yeah, you said it better than me this time. You know, because there's so many, there's only, you know, so many things new under the sun, right? But there's different angles of how you can go about looking at the sun. And that's what I want. I want to hear your point of view. I don't want someone to just tell me what I've seen over at, to your point, Entrepreneur or some other mm-hmm. magazine. I want to hear from you. And, and that's such a good point. And I'm so glad you went back and, like, clarified exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> and it probably came across really harsh. So I'm really sorry, guys, if that's the case. But, um that's what I meant. So I, I really enjoy um, the advice that you've been dishing out today. And again, I could talk to you all day. So I just want to take a moment to thank you so much for taking time out of your thank schedule you for having your blog me. and your expertise with us. I really, really appreciate it. So um, huge thanks to you guys listening to today's podcast. Remember, if you're everything to everyone, then you risk being no one. Creating your blog is the first step to investing in yourself and allows you the ability to connect with other people. You never know who you may inspire. See you in the next podcast.